All right, welcome back, investors. This is episode 23. Um, this particular episode, we're going to talk about index investing. And what's index investing? Well, index investing is buying an ETF, an electronic traded fund index, which means it's compromised. It's not necessarily a stock per se, but it's um, a basket. It's an ETF that tracks a basket of different companies. For example, the S&P 500 Spiders ETF is com- it's comprised of 500 of the top uh, most producing companies in America. And the reason this ETF is a really solid investment is because if you can't maintain a certain level of business, uh, you'll get replaced out of the, five, the top 500 companies. Recently, Tesla got put in the S&P 500 and the S&P 500 has been on a tear. You know, it's when you buy the S&P 500, you're pretty much saying, look, I think American businesses are going to keep growing. And uh, for the most part, it's been a safe bet. It's been the safest bet um, compared to anything else, whether it's bonds or real estate. Over the long term, it's been invested in stocks. Now, the reason I want to say this is, you know, before you get somebody to manage your money, it's good to ask them what are what are their uh, averages compared to? To the S&P 500 because, you know, if if you can't, you know, investing is a simple thing, but it's not an easy thing. You know, the, the, the S&P 500 is just computers trading without logic. And generally speaking, this beats out money managers and mutual funds and hedge funds and a lot of typical uh, retail traders and retail investors. Now, let's look at the one day chart, uh, 1.25%, one week, 0.96%. One month, 11%, three month, 3%, one year, the stock is up, this ETF is up 16%. And you can see it's already at record highs from March lows uh, back in March, which was a great opportunity to buy. It was all the way down to 240, uh, 222. I think the one year low was 218 bucks. And look, it's already way up, uh, way up. Um, and it's one year average right now is at 16%. And it's five year average is 74%. So what you want to do is compare your track record to the S&P 500 and ask yourself, am I beating this index? Because if you're not over the long term, then you just cost yourself a lot of money through taxes and trade fees and commissions when you could have just simply bought this ETF. Now, Jack Vogel is an index investor. Um, and he's one that's, he's uh, one that's big on in- investing in indexes. Now, the downside to index investing is one, if you invest in the index, you'll never beat it, all right, which is not necessarily a bad thing um, because sometimes the stock markets get sideways for a number of years. Uh, two, again, it's an index, so it's a basket of different companies. Um, prime example, you have uh, ARK uh, Invest, Kathy Wood's uh, index ETF, which uh, is a basket of stocks that in, in, uh, con- uh, consist of disruptive Um companies such as Tesla, Illumina. Um, if you're a simple person and you are uh, in construction or you're in uh, home building <clears throat> and building in general, you have the Builders ETX, BLDR, which is a basket of stocks that have to do with that uh, sector. So if you understand the sector you're in, I'll give you one more index ETF that I like, TQQ. All right. I don't understand every single technology company, but I see that technology is on a an increasing uptrend so if i don't want to pick individual stocks i'll just buy the tqq uh index and just keep adding to on the dips right and over time um i'll be investing along with this technological technological wave however if you're knowledgeable in this sector you can always check out the companies that's in the in the indexes and make your own index all right if you're a pharmaceutical if you're watching this you're a doctor or a nurse and you could separate the Modernas from the, uh, you know, the, the no-name pharmaceutical companies or you have some type of information that this pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical uh, company will be bigger than the other. You know, you could create your own uh, ETF, you know, as to where the average investor is seeing like, look, there's a demand for vaccines. Let me just invest in a uh, medical index. That's also fine. Your goal is this, though. Most people tell us that we can't beat the S&P 500. You're better off just buying this index. And even Warren Buffett said it's very hard to invest. You know, 
he's going to leave a majority of money to his wife and shares of Spider, uh, uh, shares of the S and P five hundred. All right, so he's just betting on America in this sense, right? Now, we teach uh, a Warren Buffett philosophy, Phil Town Rule One Investing philosophy that um, the concept of um, the concept of I forgot the name of the concept, but pretty much it says that the stock market prices are always correct. Meaning whatever a stock is trading at, that's its true value. However, we know that's false. All right? Because uh, share prices doesn't necessarily determine the value. Our job as investors, as Warren Buffett would say, his definition of investing is buying something on sale with a high degree of certainty that will increase in the future. Right? Uh, throughout different lessons, I, I mentioned the real estate sector, all right? If you want to invest in that index, it's REML. But there's particular stocks in there that a guy like a Phil Tano, Warren Buffett, or Monash Papaya is going to take and not deal with the rest. And that stock is SRG. It's a real estate. It's a REIT. And the uh, book value, uh, it's, it's, it's dirt margin of safety value was $17 a share. And Monash and these guys got it at seven, eight. Now the stock went all the way back up to like eighteen. Now it's back down, and they see it in the future being forty. So this is the type of investments we want to make. We want to find the companies that we understand. Um, check out their book value. If you if you know, it's really good to learn how to read a balance sheet and understand cash flow statement. But if you don't know how, there's different uh, resources online where you could look at the book value. You could just type in the book value per share. Of the particular stock that you understand and if it's on sale you invest in that if you think it's going to give you a greater return in the future than an index so in closing uh, the S&P 500 is a pretty safe index to invest in you have different uh, indexes that deal with a slew of different businesses um, and if you generally think that particular sector sector is going to increase whether it's lumber um, whether it's um, infrastructure or uh, technology, you find that particular index, all right? Or maybe you might think there might be a volatility in the near future. You know, there's a volatility index. So there's different indexes you can invest in to have a return on your, uh, a good return on your investment. And if you're not beating this particular index, uh, the S&P 500 being a great benchmark, then you're better off just buying an index and not picking individual stocks and not being super active because this is the benchmark. All right. If somebody wants to give you advice, if you know, you have a diff, uh, you know, these are uh, different uh, money managers, you know, you could always ask them what's their track record and compare it to the S and P 500 and see if you're better off just buying this holding tight and uh, being patient. All right. So that was this episode and I'm signing out for now.